Welcome to this edition of Call Your Focus on today's show. We'll take a look at the Board of County Commissioners meeting. A new Golden Gate Shopping Center is approved by the board. And new commission districts are adopted. I'm Troy Miller. We'll cover these stories and more next on Call Your Focus. Stay tuned. Whether reporting on the latest news stories or hot issues, taking a look at county government services, or announcing what's happening around the county, this is Call Your Focus, bringing government home. At the recent Board of County Commissioners meeting, after years of debate, the board voted four to one to approve a rezone request and change the Golden Gate Area Master Plan, clearing the way for a new 41-acre shopping center on the corner of Golden Gate and Wilson Boulevards. The project met with some opposition over the years due to its size, but a straw ballot question in the last election saw 76% rather of voters in six nearby precincts approving of the project. Concerns about the potential size of the building caused Commissioner Donna Fiala to be the dissenting vote, but the board did agree to cap the potential size of the center at 150,000 square feet. While the total development will encompass 41 acres, there is a significant amount of green space in the design. The fact that we have very large uh, retention ponds for drainage, and I heard a concern from one resident about uh, the, the, the water flow. Uh, from this project because obviously you know once you start paving especially where you have flat surfaces you are displacing water and it has to go somewhere the fact that we have large retention ponds is significant the fact that we have as much green space as we have is significant I want to see more of that in our projects it is very important we need the green space for drainage we need it for other environmental reasons. With this hurdle cleared, the construction should begin soon and the center could be open in two years. The board unanimously approved newly drawn district maps that reflect population numbers from the 2010 census. The redistricting process included five public input meetings with the goal of evenly distributing the county's population based on the new census data. The county's population grew by about 70,000 residents over the last 10 years. Tim Durham from the Supervisor of Elections Office gives us more details. The county planning drafted five different map versions and then we went through a public process of uh, going to each commission district and doing a presentation on you know what's what's redistricting all about so kind of the ins and outs on redistricting and we're very pleased today that the uh, Board of County Commissioners adopted a final map um, and it's very close to map one with just some very minor adjustments that I think are quite sensible. The map that was eventually chosen was slightly modified to keep Everglades City and Chokoloski in Commissioning District 5 while an area of north of Immokalee Road and east of I-75 was moved into District 3. Independent legal counsel Adam Kerlick confirmed for the board that the redistricting process was done to the letter of the law. The county requested that our firm review the redistricting process as carried out by the staff and also verify that the five uh, proposed alternative maps meet the board's four redistricting criteria and that the maps do not violate state or federal law. Um, as included in, in the report that was provided to you, I'll briefly explain um, in more detail our, our firm's a role in the in the redistricting process and our conclusions that the redistricting process uh, as conducted by staff was comprehensive, uh, fair, legal, and a truly commendable effort. The school board has agreed to use the same boundaries adopted by the BCC. Collier County is considered a covered jurisdiction under the 1965 Voting Rights Act, which means the newly adopted maps need to be cleared by the U.S. Justice Department before it can take effect. Redistricting information is available at callyourgov.net front slash redistricting. The board heard a staff presentation regarding the question of adding fluoride to the county's public drinking water supply. Fluoridation is not mandated by any regulatory agency, but is considered a public health issue. The Collier County Water Department has been adding fluoride to the water since 1984. Several medical and dental experts spoke in favor of continuing the program, touting the benefits to both bone and oral health. While some members of the public spoke in opposition to the program, the board voted 4-1 to, to continue the fluoridation program. 
Dr. Joan Colfer explains why she supports fluoridation. This is a highly researched article. There's, there's hundreds of studies out there that support the safety and efficacy of fluoridating your, your water supply. There's, you know, it's, it's good science, it's good research. Um, we had researchers here that are, that are national experts on fluoridation um, to convince the commissioners that, um, that keeping fluoride in our water was safe and, and effective. And they did the right thing. They voted to keep fluoride in our water. Fluoridation of the county's public water supply cost $32,000 per year. Commissioners unanimously order, awarded a $502,000 contract for design services at the CAT Operations Center at 8300 Radio Road. Alternative Transportation Modes Director Michelle Arnold explains how the federal funds will be used to potentially retrofit the former car dealership into a fully functional CAT facility. The county purchased that property in, in I think, 2008. Um, it was an old car dealership. We've done what we could with the property um, to make it into an operation center for transit, um, but there's a little bit more work to be done. Um, what this uh, architect's going to be able to do is create for us a master plan, um, identifying the improvements that will be required to um, make that a, a full operational facility for our transit operations. It'll include um, an overhang for transfer opportunity that we're currently doing there. Um, um, it'll uh, include fueling island. Um, right now we're using a fuel truck for, that's on loan to us from our uh, fleet department. Um, it'll be really nice for us to have our own fueling island so that um, you know, we don't. Uh, we can minimize the environmental impact and, and the like. Um, it'll have a permanent bus watch facility and uh, just kind of bring the the uh, um, the grounds uh, up to date and and be able to handle the, the bus traffic as opposed to car traffic. The design will be complete in 2012, along with cost estimates, allowing staff to proceed with grant requests. The board approved an item to advertise and bring back for future consideration ordinances which repeal or amend county ordinances that regulate firearms. All Florida counties need to comply with a new state law that takes effect October 1st, which essentially declares that only the state can regulate firearms and ammunition and any local ordinance are null and void. We will keep you updated when this item does return at the next meeting. The board voted to direct the county attorney's office to appeal a recent state decision related to the county's annual summer food program. The Florida Department of Education has ordered the county to reimburse the state $101,324.79 for more than 57,000 meals served over a two-year period from 2009 and 2010. In that time, about 600,000 meals were provided, and so the meals in question account for about 10% of the total number of meals served. The dispute with the state is simply over the milk that needed to accompany each meal served. Milk was provided for each meal. However, if milks were unused and left over, staff collected and refrigerated them and provided the milk to the children at the next scheduled meal service. Also, at the startup of the program in 2009 and 2010, milks left over from the school year were donated to the summer food program by the Collier County School District. The county contends that it should not be punished for using a common sense approach in managing this program. Well, it's time for a break. When we come back, Friends of the Library make a big donation to the county's library system. And the Collier County to Lee County bus transfer route will soon connect us to our neighbors to the north. All of that and more when Call Your Focus continues. Welcome back to Call Your Focus. Beginning on October 6th, Call Your Area Transit passengers will be getting something they've requested for some time now. Lee Tran and CAT have created a transfer route that will provide bus service between the two counties. The new Link route will begin October 6th and operate seven days a week with a Lee Tran bus leaving every 90 minutes from the super stop on Immokalee Road at Creekside Business Park, just east of US 41. And it will make several stops in Lee County, with the last one on that route being at the Coconut Point Mall. This stop is on the Cat Red Route 1B and 1C, and the fare for the new route is $1.25. Alternative Transportation Mode Director Michelle Arnold talks about the long-awaited connection. After a lot of uh, requests, we're able to implement a, a route in 
conjunction with Lee Tran. Lee Tran is going to be creating a, a bus route to connect into Collier County. It'll be an express when it comes into Collier, but finally we're going to have a link between Bonita Springs and Immokalee Road because there's been no bus service within that area. It's going to actually start October 6th and um, we're going to be having a ribbon cutting. That ribbon cutting will be part of a special inaugural celebration to be held at 10.45 a.m. in Creekside Commerce Park on Creekside Way, just one street south of Immokalee Road in a vacant lot next to the mobile on the run. The parking will be at the Naples Daily News parking lot just a short stroll away, and we hope to see you there. Now, if you want more information, visit their website at colliergov.net front slash cat. Every year, the Collier County Water Department temporarily changes the disinfection process for the Collier County Water District drinking water supply. Beginning September 9th until October 14th, the Collier County Water Department is disinfecting the water with free chlorine rather than combined chlorine and ammonia. Water Department Director Paul Matosh explains why the process is necessary. We uh, convert from combined chlorine, chlorine combined with ammonia, to free chlorine chlorine only. So what we do is we turn off the ammonia feed, feed about the same amount of chlorine in the water, it just isn't combined, so it's free. That free residual is uh, of benefit to us and actually a recommendation of the Florida uh, De uh, Department of Environmental Protection. And they, uh, they recommend that uh, as a disinfection process to, to help uh, burn out the system, flush the system. Actually, free chlorine is a stronger uh, disinfectant and so it works a lot better. The reason why we use combined chlorine is because it lasts longer in the system and we've got a lot of pipes in the system, 900 miles of water main and we have to keep a disinfectant residual at the very end when it comes out of the customer's faucet there needs to be a, a disinfectant residual so chloramines works better. This temporary change in disinfectant does not cause adverse health effects. However, during this period customers may experience a change in the taste and odor of their water associated with the free chlorine. At a recent ceremony, the Friends of the Library of Collier County President Nick Lynn presented Library Director Marilyn Mathis a check for $100,000 for the purpose of buying books for the county's 10 libraries. The Friends of the Library have been incredible supporters forever and uh, they helped start the library system to begin with 50 some years ago and today they have donated a hundred thousand dollars for us to purchase new books for the library which is really incredible the county provides as much funding as they can and it's difficult with uh, reduced tax rolls and tax um, um, levies this year and uh, the friends said we need to keep books coming to the library and they said we're going to do it I, I think we're going to spend the majority of the money for children's books um, we're also going to buy some audiobooks on CD. They're still very popular with our users. And we're going to also purchase some downloadable books um, and because they're growing in popularity too. But it's $100,000 worth of books uh, could buy us four to 5,000 books. So we're really grateful and appreciative of the Friends. If you would like to donate to the Friends of the Library, give them a call at 262-8135. The Water Department is wrapping up work on the renovation of the Isles of Capri water system. The system was very old and utilized cement asbestos pipes. The system has become prone to water main breaks, which led to costly repairs and service interruptions. Water Director Paul Matosh talks about the scope of the project. Because of the number of failures there, uh, we decided that it was really time uh, a, a timely project to uh, replace the entire water distribution system. And in replacing the water distribution system, we actually added a number of fire hydrants uh, out there to, uh, to proper spacing uh, so that the uh, fire department is, uh, is much more capable of fighting fires uh, there. So that, that was a, there was a significant improvement. The project, which was done in two phases, is just being completed. Now let's take a look at some upcoming Collier County government meetings. The following meetings are all held in the board meeting room on the third floor of the main administration building, 3299 Tamiami Trail East, at the Collier County Government Center, unless otherwise indicated. On Tuesday, September 27th at 9 a.m., the Board of County Commissioners will meet in regular session. For more information on Collier County government or to inquire about other meetings that have been scheduled since the taping of this program, 
Contact the Communication and Customer Relations Department at 252-8383 or via email Troy Miller at CallYourGov.net. You can also click on our website at CallYourGov.net for more information. Welcome back to Call Your Focus. Now let's take a look at some of the many fun and interesting programs being offered through the Collier County Parks and Recreation Department. After School Adventures offers parents a safe and fun environment for their children when school is not in session. The program is for children from ages 5 to 12 and runs weekdays from 2.40 p.m. to 6 p.m. from January 2nd to June 2nd. The program is available in East Naples, Immokalee, Max Hass, Veterans, and Vineyards Community Parks and the Golden Gate Community Center. For more information, call 252-4000. The Golden Gate Aquatic Facility offers youth aquatic lessons for children in five different levels based on their current abilities. There are several options for dates and times, so if you want more information on schedules and costs, call the Golden Gate Aquatic Facility at 353-7128. If you have arthritis and are looking for a low or no impact exercise, then the Golden Gate Aquatic Facility has the answer for you. Instructors for these classes are all trained by the Arthritis Foundation and the exercises are specifically designed to give you a good workout with little or no joint impact. Classes are Fridays and Tuesdays from 11 a.m. until noon and are $5 each. If you want more information on the arthritis exercise class, call the Golden Gate Aquatic Facility at 353-7128. If you are interested in quilting, then the Naples Quilting Club is the place for you. They meet every Thursday from 1 to 3 p.m. at the East Naples Community Park, and the cost is free. If you feel like trying the tango, then sign up for ballroom dancing classes. This course will introduce and review a new dance each week, including the foxtrot, the tango, the rumba, and swing dancing. So put on your dancing shoes and meet at East Naples Community Park on Fridays from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. The cost is $5 per class. Learn how to be the best babysitter at Babysitting Boot Camp. The course is designed to teach all the basics in babysitting, including CPR and first aid training. Participants must be 11 years old and must attend all classes. For more information and costs, call 252-4000. If you're having trouble controlling your canine, then basic dog obedience may be just what you need. Using consistency, repetition, and positive reinforcement, this course helps owners learn how to communicate with their trusted companions. You will also learn handling skills, basic obedience, cues, and verbal commands. Basic dog obedience is for dogs 4 months to 10 years old. The class meets on Saturdays from 9 to 10 a.m. at Veterans Community Park. For cost information, call 252-4000. There's a whole lot more to do in Collier County, not mentioned here on Collier Focus. For information regarding the location of county parks and other activities, contact the Parks and Recreation Department at 252-4000 or the Collier County Communication and Customer Relations Office at 252-8848. Well, that's all the time we have on this edition of Collier Focus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.